Welcome to Time for Hope, a ministry of Hope for Living Media Church and Bible Study Time Incorporated. Here's your pastor and host, Dr. Frida Cruz. Thank you for joining us on Time for Hope. I'm Dr. Frida Cruz, your host, and today I am being joined by author and pastor, Dr. Phil Willingham, and we will be discussing his book titled, The Most Powerful Voice in Your Life. Subtitle, Learn to Tame Your Self-Talk. Our words have power over our lives. The words you hear in your head can build or destroy you, impact your relationships, your career, your family, and even your health. All the things that matter to you the most. What words do you say to yourself subconsciously each and every day? Do your words breathe life and fuel your dreams? Sometimes we aren't even aware how we are talking to ourselves. As Dr. Phil and I discuss his book, you will become aware that as a person of faith, you want to be guided by the voice of the Holy Spirit, not your own inner voice. For more, stay with us. And Phil, it's great having you. Uh, agree to come and give your time. I know you must be a busy man and share your experience and also share your book with us. Well, it's an honor to be with you, Dr. Frieda. It's great to be here today. So looking forward to you it. You actually drove a long ways to get here. We did. We did. I, I, I still love to travel. Grew yeah. up traveling as an evangelist, so I still have that a little bit in my blood, but it wasn't bad. You know, there's a lot of uh, therapy involved in tri in driving. I, uh, I used to do a lot of driving back uh, to Florida where my parents were when they were aging and, and sure. I needed to go and, and that sort of thing. And I found it good therapy, actually. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Not, yeah, as long as you keep your eyes on the road. And <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of beautiful country between uh, Northwest Indiana and Spartanburg. Yeah. So it's got a lot of beautiful, especially when you drive through Eastern Kentucky and a lot of beautiful country. So Kentucky's a beautiful yeah. place to drive through, <clears throat> yes. Now we're talking about the most powerful voice in our life. And immediately, uh, you're, if you know, if you look at that, you would think he's going to say it was our parents, uh, it was mother, it was father, it was this, it was that, or some school teacher, or Sunday school teacher. They used to say when I was growing up, and uh, the three most powerful people in our lives were our school teachers. Uh, our parents, our school teachers, and our Sunday school teachers. Sure, yeah. And they, they're not, of course, they wouldn't say that anymore. Uh, but, uh, and there was a lot of truth to that, a sure. lot of truth to that. Sure, yeah. And, uh, you know, Dr. Fried, I, I often tell people, you know, after uh, over 40 years of ministry now that, you know, sometimes people say, well, you know, uh, Pastor Phil, God's the most powerful voice. And, and here's what I always challenge it in people. How many people... Do I hear say, well, you know, I know what God's word says. I know God says, but they go and do the opposite. So many times it, our own voice overrides even God's voice and God's word. And that's kind of what this book challenges us to do is to how do we bring our thoughts that eventually affect our words? How do we bring them into alignment with God's word and let his word be the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end, the first and last. Let God's word be that final authority in our lives. It was just like a phone call I had this morning and I of course uh, get lots of these uh, kinds of things and this person said I just don't believe I'm going to make it through this. Yeah. What it, you know, <laughs> sure. I just don't believe I'm going to make yeah. it through this. I yeah. said stop. Stop right now. Yeah. You don't want to tell yourself that because God mm -hmm. says otherwise. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and so that's what you're saying. Well, right? it, it is, you know, and, and I tell people, you know, our book is more than just a, a, a you know, positive talking uh, type, uh, you know, standing in front mm -hmm. of the mirror, uh, you know, I'm blessed and, uh, you know, I'm highly favored. And I, I'm not against somebody doing that, but it goes beyond that. You know, mm -hmm. if you're standing in front of the mirror, uh, you know, some people think that faith is denial, denial of the, uh, the, the problems. Faith isn't denial. Faith is the acknowledgement. There's an issue going mm -hmm. on here, mm -hmm. doctor, mm -hmm. kids, family, whatever. But faith looks, you takes you beyond that 
present moment and put you in the focus of, well, what does God's word say? What mm -hmm. is a, you know, mm -hmm. I've got a friend that talks about that Satan is the pain whisperer. Satan will whisper to us. And every time he whispers, he brings pain. He brings agony, defeat. God is the promise speaker. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, what the book talks about, how do we bring our thoughts and eventually our words into alignment with God's word, that promise speaker, and, and look at reality. Hey, this is a problem. This is, I've got a family, I've got a relational, I've got a financial, mm -hmm. <clears throat> whatever problem. You acknowledge it, but then you go beyond that. You know, I was going to use that word reality thinking because <clears throat> it used to be uh, very popular that you heard from mental health professionals uh, and somebody wrote about it called reality uh, therapy. And it, it is, it's necessary to face the reality of a situation, isn't it? Sure, sure. Uh, I see faith when we can see the reality of the situation and still have faith that God is going to be mm -hmm. there for us and eventually deliver us. I see that as reality thinking or believing or whatever you want to call sure. it. Sure. You know, studies show that we can speak about 120 words a minute, some, some more, some less, but we can think about 1,300 words a minute. So you, 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 you pause on that. And if I have 1,300 negative, destructive uh, thoughts going on in my mind, 10 minutes of that, that's 13,000 negative, destructive thoughts that I'm producing inside of me. Mm -hmm. And if you hear something long enough, you know, and, and adults will always challenge me, well, well, I don't talk to myself. We all do. We just, mm -hmm. you know, my oldest daughter, Sunshine, she, she always loves it when I mention her name, Sunshine. She's the only one who calls me Dr. Phil, really. Everybody else calls me <laughs> Pastor or what. But Sunshine was born with Down syndrome. Now, she's 40 years old now. She works in our preschool, daycare, very relational. But one of the things That's we... That's unusual. I read yeah, that it, about Down yeah. syndrome. But Down syndrome will do their self-talk out loud. Mm -hmm. So if, if Rhonda, my wife and I, if we ask her to do something or challenge her or need a request, and if she doesn't want to do it, she'll dismiss herself, and you can hear her go upstairs. She'll shut the door, and she's in there talking, and she's talking her way through that situation. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you see that a five or six year old, I'm going to take this red, uh, you know, red peg goes into the round circle. They, they, they self-talk out loud. Mm -hmm. Well, downs do that. And what, what I discovered that while most of us won't admit that we talk to ourselves, we do. And if I have, again, 13,000 negative, destructive thoughts going on in 10 minutes, is that going to take me up? Is it going to take me down? Is it going to build me, make me stronger? Is it going to make me weaker? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's going to take you down. So the book just challenges people, number one, to recognize where, where are your words taking you? They're powerful. You know, I grew up in the South, and uh, I'm sure you've heard the phrase, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, we know that's not true. Mm -hmm. We know words are powerful. Mm -hmm. And if you hear something long enough, my dad, uh, there were six siblings, and uh, I'm, I'm in the pecking order. I'm number two son. And my dad, when I was a kid, five, six years old, dad will say, you know, Phil can do anything with his hands. He can play any instrument. If Phil sees something with strings on it, he can play it. Well, I believed it. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Frieda, I never, I, w I started playing a guitar, banjo, mandolin, anything had strings on it. I would pick it up. I'd play by ear, and I'd find a note. I'd, mm -hmm. And I, I heard that. On the same scale, I would go to school. I got in about the third grade. I remember about third grade. Teachers started saying, well, you know, Phil struggles in tests. Uh, Phil doesn't do good of comprehending what he's reading. And uh, I remember my dad saying, hey, Phil, you know, you're probably not going to do good in school, so you better learn a trade. You may not even graduate. Mm -hmm. Well, I quit school when I was 16 years old. Drop out of school. Now, there was an accident. I'll talk a little bit about my book. But as I morph my way through life, fast forward 14 years later, I'm 30 years old. I go back, get my GED. 
go back, start in college, mm -hmm. get my bachelor's, get a couple masters, end up with a doctorate by the age of 50. Now, I always tell people that all of a sudden at the age of 30, I get smart or God baptized me with brains. No, I started changing what I was thinking and what, and what I was saying told. and you what were, I was being told. You, we want to talk about the listening uh, to what's being said, either what we're, we're telling ourselves yeah. or what others are telling us. I have a close friend that is left handed mm -hmm. and the teachers just gave him a terrible <laughs> time in school. Uh, I don't Apparently, they didn't believe that he sure. couldn't use his right hand to write or whatever, <laughs> uh, and um, so forth. And it, he still, to this day, remembers a lot of. She would, uh, one of the teachers would slap his wow. hand trying to get him to change to the other hand, and those kinds of things said to you, uh, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. they stick with you. They can stick with you. That's what we're talking about: is not letting them do it, right? That's it. That's you know, repetition is a powerful argument. You ask any parent, repetition, mom, can I do this? Dad, can I do it? Hey, please, can I, can I? Repetition. Eventually, oh, okay, go ahead. And that's the way it is many times with our words and our thoughts. When you hear something wrong enough, it gets ingrained. And I always tell people, we're, while we're not responsible for everything that happens to us, there's a lot of bad things that can happen in this broken world that you and I have no control over. But we are responsible for what happens in us. Yeah, uh, what happens where? With inside of us. In, I can't have I can't control what happens to me, but I can absolutely control what They're happens in me. It's time for us to go out on a break. But is I was going to ask you what self talk was and what you mean by self talk. I think you've said, but when we come back I do want it spelled out about self talk, okay? Oh, okay. And we will be right back. Do you view yourself as a winner or loser in the game of life? I could also ask, do you view yourself as a victim or overcomer? Maybe you have never really thought about it, although I can assure you that your behavior has been the consequence of your answer to these two questions. In reality, your answer to these questions reveals your beliefs about yourself. Our beliefs related to our personhood, personal value, abilities, and destiny are like a strong undercurrent that sweep us along in either positive or negative directions. So if we want to change our behavior, we must first change our thinking. We must practice thinking about what we are thinking or telling ourselves about ourselves and our lives. If I believe I am a loser, then I will make sure that I continue to lose in life. If I believe I am a victim, I will assume the role of victim. And not only do we follow the dictates of these falsehoods, but with our speech and behavior, we relate to others what we believe about ourselves, and they in turn will view us in the same way. When others reinforce our self-depreciating views of ourselves, we become sealed in a vicious circle of self-defeating thought and behavioral patterns. If I am describing you, I want to assure you there is hope and no better time than the beginning of a new year to think in terms of change. For real change to come, your old beliefs about yourself must be replaced with new and truthful ones that generate behavioral changes. Change will require that you decide three things if you really want to change, if you believe you can change, and if you are ready to take the plunge, whatever it takes. Then you must determine what change or changes you want to make. I can help you by asking two more questions. What do you want to happen in your life during this coming year? And what are you willing to do to make it happen? 
For support and guidance, I suggest you seek out a professional Christian counselor or spiritual director and enlist the help of the Creator God who desires to see you reach your full potential as His son or daughter. Thanks for staying with us on Time for Hope. Our guest for today is Dr. Phil Willingham, and we're talking about his book titled The Most Powerful Voice in Your Life. And if we left it at that without the subtitle, <laughs> uh, they could think, oh, my, are ghosts talking to me? Sure. Or, the, or the, you know, is this one talking to me, somebody that I don't see or whatever? It could, uh, but you've got a subtitle, yes, of course, that. Uh, makes uh, sense out of the, the uh, title, Learn to Tame Your Self-Talk. And that's what I want you to make clear to our viewers. What, when we're talking about self-talk, just put it out in a, in a nice st statement yeah. as to what is self-talk. Yeah. Well, we're talking about those uh, internal words, you know, not, not every thought that we have, we will vocalize. But, but a lot of studies will say about 77% of our thoughts that we have are going to be negative thoughts. That's just kind of in life. You're just an average, normal person. And what happens with self-talk, even in believers' life, and I always challenge people that not every problem in our life is necessarily a problem that has a spiritual answer. By that I mean, some people think uh, when they're living a defeated life or they can't get victory over this particular habit or maybe some hurt in their life, they think, well, you need to pray more or you need to fast more, you need to read your Bible more. And all of that's good, I believe in that. But sometimes it's, it's not a spiritual answer. I always use the illustration of Elijah, a great mountain battle he had with, with Baal, fire comes down. Elijah gets a letter, Jezebel, I'm going to kill you. He runs off. He wants to die. And God shows up. Very first thing God let Elijah do was sleep and eat. You know, he didn't tell Elijah, hey, you need to pray more. You need to see. He needed some natural, just some common sense mm -hmm. stuff. And I tell people sometimes, uh, particularly when I talk to marriage, uh, couples in marriage or families in relationship crisis, uh, well, I, yeah, I need you to pray for me. And I have people say, well, I want you to come and pray for me. Pastor Phil, I never have a negative thought in my life. And I say, and I tell them, hey, if I had that kind of power, I'd lay hands on myself. I wouldn't waste it on you. Mm -hmm. I do. It, it, some things are not spiritual answered by prayer, Bible. It's how do we manage what's going on here, our thoughts. You know, Paul talks about it in Corinthians, in uh, 1 Corinthians 10, pulling down those strongholds, yeah. pulling them down. And How do you bringing every thought into captivity, into captivity, into the captivity of yeah. Jesus Christ, and that, of course, has to come through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, and that self-talk. You know, I always I tell people this: two things didn't get saved when when you get born again, your mind and your body. Our, our mind has to be constantly renewed on a daily process. Mm -hmm. Our body has to be subdued on a daily process. Just because I'm a believer, Christ follower, Holy Spirit filled, doesn't just mean that the enemy's not going to bother my mind, put thoughts in there, I'm going to hear something. And a lot of times, the self-negative talk, as we've talked earlier, it comes from a stamp that we hear, well, you're stupid, or you're lazy, or you can't do this, or you're just like so-and-so. And when that stamp gets there, if you don't know how to take charge of it, recognize it, renounce it, and start replacing. That's the reason why Paul talks That's about That's the word replace yeah. right there that I yeah. like. Yeah, because you know, you know from, from your study and all your counseling, you don't get rid of a bad thought by not saying, I'm not going to think about it, not going to mm -hmm. think about it. And I, you get rid of it by replacing. That's the reason why Paul talks about Philippians. Think on what? Things that are just and true. <laughs> Beautiful, wonderful. Uh, Honest count, report. Yeah. Uh, and, and sometimes that's the, you know, when a guy comes to me, he said, well, you know, my wife and I are having a problem. Well, what? I, I need you to pray for me. Well, let me, here's the first thing. Well, where's your words? Are you building her up? 
Are you tearing her down? Are, are you speaking life into your marriage? Are you speaking death? Because right there is where some people need to start. Now, I'm not against praying. I'm not against fasting. Mm -hmm. not against reading mm -hmm. Bible verses. Mm -hmm. But you can, read, you can read an entire entire chapter in the Bible. But if you're going to go over here and start demeaning your children mm -hmm. or your spouse with your words, your marriage is not going to change. So you're not just talking about self-talk in your book, uh, and I've gone through your book, of course, uh, and you're not just referring to what we tell ourselves on the inside of our brains, but you're actually uh, talking about words that we speak. Yeah. Uh, now, how do you tie words that we speak uh, and, and how powerful they are, and, and you say they are, into this self-talk? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I talk about in the book of, of, of being able, again, this is not just another self-help book and, hey, think positive. It's how do we bring our attitude, our motives, our words, and our actions into alignment with what God's Word says in our life, whether you are new born Christian or are you a seasoned believer? Because what happens is that that self-talk, those are the things that's going on. And again, like I said, we, the studies show we can think about 1,300 thoughts a minute. And we're having all kinds of thoughts. Even while you and I are here having conversation, our mind is thinking about other things. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're doing, we're controlling that. We're not blurting that out. The self-talk is when we when we take those thoughts and we do verbalize them. We, we talk them to ourselves. Well, I can't believe I did that stupid thing. I cannot believe I acted that way. I can't. Or why did I do? You know, we'll find ourselves saying that. But even if you don't verbally say it, it's just as powerful if it's here, because I tell people this, and here's a thought and I mentioned in the book. I know people who are right in their hearts with God, but they're wrong in their heads with God. They have a heart for Christ. Oh, I love God. But you keep self-destructing by the words and the thoughts that you're saying, the things that you're thinking and the words that you're saying, you've got to, as I said, every day. It's not a one-time thing. It's not, oh, I got prayed for last week for my... It's an everyday okay. thing. And that's the reason I tell people, you don't try to do it. You train mm -hmm. yourself to do it. Mm -hmm. We train ourselves. How do I recognize, is this a good thought or a bad thought? Mm -hmm. Is this going to take me up? Is it going to take me down? Mm -hmm. Does this line up with God's mm -hmm. Word? Mm -hmm. Like you said, your friend, you said this one. Well, I don't know if I'm going to get through this. Well, number one, you know, we, we know that Christ is always, he said, I'll never leave you, forsake you. Mm -mm. You are going to get through it. Now, you, you, you may not be able to see it at the moment, mm -hmm. but your faith and trust that in God. That my uh, response, too. Uh, you know, we have that hope all along as we trust and believe in God. It might look like at the present time that uh, that there's not going to be a breakthrough uh, from God, but yeah. we don't go by that. We go by what God's Word says, sure. what He promises, mm -hmm. and the hope that we have uh, yeah. in Him. Now, when uh, you you also uh, in talking about the things that we are to think on years ago, God brought that verse uh, to me sure. because I, I was in the midst of some negative thinking mm -hmm. uh, as, you know, and he reminded me and and pointed me to that verse as it were. And it is a, and it's amazing how many guests recently, how many people recently, how many occasions recently that that particular verse sure. uh, has been brought out, uh, yeah. maybe referred to and uh, talking uh, to. But when we think about um, our uh, our thinking uh, and um, uh, she's telling me we don't have uh, much time <laughs> left and that's the reason we're going to do two weeks um, on with you on this book because we're just getting started good and we're already running out of time and uh, and I'm going to end this part of it uh, Dr. Phil with something right out of your book because I want our viewers to make sure that they know we're not going to be able uh, to, to put out what's 
totally what's in this book and that they need to get a copy. So I'm, I'm quoting from your book, okay, okay. right now. Self-talk can sabotage an individual's walk and destiny. Now that's powerful when wow. you talk about it sabotaging our destiny. Without the confidence to take actions, you, you simply won't. So where's the confidence going to come from? Has, that has to come from God, doesn't it? Absolutely. Even the confidence to do it. If you talk yourself out of success, it's an issue within your own mind. The, the solution, be aware, take thoughts captive and meditate on powerful scriptures. And I would say, uh, try to make it a daily, a okay. daily practice uh, in doing that. So that's where we'll pick up with our uh, second show uh, next week. In the meantime, I have something, uh, a couple of things from a couple of our viewers that I want to share uh, with our viewers. And the first one is a prayer request. And we do invite you to send in your prayer request to us if you haven't and you desire to. We, we have a Monday morning worship service here and we take up these prayer requests and um, so you're welcome to send yours in or even encouraged to send yours in because we believe in prayer here um, at, uh, at Time for Hope. But this is a prayer request. Please pray for me for God's protection for myself and my husband. There's no explanation as to what they're to be protected from. Also pray that God would help me to not have doubt and unbelief, and that could be a prayer for any and all of us. There are times when we will, it can, and we'll experience doubt and unbelief, and sometimes it's coming from this self-talk that Dr. Phil uh, is talking about in his book that causes us to have that doubt and unbelief. And then I have a, an encouraging note from a viewer, dear Dr. Frieda, I appreciate you and your show, Time for Hope, so much. I will pray for you and your ministry. That is one of the greatest things you could do for me and can do for me is pray for me and my ministry. God bless you and thank you for that. And the, the other thing that I would encourage you to do is uh, to make sure, as I've already said, that you get a copy of Dr. Phil Willingham's book. So it, I'm calling him by his last name so we don't get the Phil's mixed up, uh, the Dr. Phil's mixed up. Uh, get a copy of his book. And then I, uh, I asked you to make sure that you join us again next week as we conclude the, the discussions that we're going to have that won't cover the whole book about our guest book. Thank you for watching Time for Hope, a ministry of Hope for Living Media Church and Bible Study Time Incorporated. We offer a free fact sheet with more information on today's topic. Call or write us to get your copy today. The resource we are offering this week is available for a donation of at least $15 to the Time for Hope ministry. Any additional donation you wish to send will be greatly appreciated. Call us at 800-669-9133. Write us at Post Office Box 2169, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29304. Or visit our website at timeforhope.org. As we continue to give out messages of hope, a financial gift of any amount to support this ministry will be greatly appreciated. When you send us a gift, you are joining us in offering hope to many viewers seeking help and hope for their situations and enabling us to inform and inspire viewers to expand our mission as they learn and in turn can minister more effectively to hurting people around them. Join us next week for more on today's topic. Look for Dr. Frieda's scriptural devotions on our Time for Hope TV ministry Facebook page. And to see this program again online, visit our website or search for the Time for Hope TV ministry on YouTube, iTunes, Roku, or Facebook. Until next time, have a great week. And remember, it is Time for Hope. <laughs>